What's up, friends? So today I'm going to be painting this 1984, I think it is, Dodge Ram D100, I think. And we're going to be doing it today in my homemade paint booth at my house. So let's see how it turns out. First, we're going to bag it up. All right, I got it masked up. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Um, I wanna talk to you about something. If you could like and subscribe and maybe comment down how you think I'm doing would be awesome. It'd be very helpful to me. I'd appreciate it. So I got this masked up and I can already tell you this is gonna be a giant flaw. I don't know why I masked that off because I'm gonna whip the hose around and it's gonna get knocked right out, I don't know. It made me feel better about it, I don't know. So yeah, this is the masking setup. As you can see, I got a bucket up there for if I need to reach the front part of the roof, I can easily use it as a step stool. Then I have one back here where I can step up on a board. I always use a board on the back of the, the, back of the cab because it can easily get up to do the roof and it will be stable instead of stepping on a fuel pump or fuel lines and breaking something. So that's the setup. So I'll bring you back. I got to do some seam sealing around some of these seams, which is not going to be very fun. I got some up here, some down here and along the roof. So I'll bring you back after I get that done. All right, we're about ready, but I always, when I do seam seal, I have to be prepared. I always have gloves, extra towels, thinner, for if you need to clean something up real quick, sometimes you use tape to mask it off. And I got extra tips and some acid brushes to help with spreading. Sometimes if you, you can spread it with a wet towel with thinner and it'll help. As you can see, I got some of this over here masked up to help keep it clean. We're gonna go ahead and do the cab corner on both sides, and then we'll do the whole entire drip rail, the top and the bottom next. So let's go ahead and start doing the cab corners. All right, hopefully I don't make a mess already of dripping. Not a good start. Thank you. 
did the top, just put a light coat and I'll just smear it in because I don't want to put it too heavy. It's a little sloppy looking, but it's not because it'll work out. As you can see, you can push it in because I don't want to fill the gap. I just want to fill the gap's supposed to be there, so you want to try to keep it nice, clean, and even like that. Put your tape off. Stick it to the other tape because that makes it hard, but whatever. And just like that. Look how good that seam sealer turned out. Let me show you a secret. This is what we were using. This stuff levels out. It works amazing as seam sealer. You should try it. Prepsol and we could do like Marco Speedo coat and spit my energy deep drink on it to what is it he say like summons the paint gods whatever we're not doing that but I will drink it Shh. and we're gonna wipe it down with Prepsol and we're gonna use a microfiber we do not use towels any paper products they leave lint so let's get that done. less dirt so we're gonna go ahead and I'll spray the whole entire floor down with water and then I'll suit up and we'll go mix sealer and then we'll tack it off
got sealer on the whole thing and it's flashed up so now I'm ready to move on to base coat. Let's go. All right, we're spraying Metalux base coat through Iwata Kiwami 4 with I think it is a 1-3 tip, maybe 1-2. I don't remember exactly, but we're going to spray it at 20 PSI. Let's go. Three coats. I got four coats of base coat on. It's flashed up. I just gotta re-wet the floor, give it a tack, and we're ready to put on three coats of clear. Let's go. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss how this turns out. I'm gonna be shooting clear through a Tecna Pro Light at 30 PSI. Three coats. This is after three coats of clear. Let me know how you think it turned out in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.